So, you know, there's always a lot of fiddling because I play so many different games on different machines, you know? So I always have to fiddle and fiddle some more. I rushed through dinner tonight, so I didn't give myself ample time to do it. Uh, you know, that looks, that looks alright to me. Okay, thank you guys for being my extra ears. <clears throat> so how are we all doing tonight? You have a good holiday? Those of us who got a holiday today? Oh, Ad Amazing, I didn't even notice that was you, sorry. Good to see you. So, we've done a lot with this game in three months. Um, let me just tweet that I'm live. And it's coming along. Uh, you may have caught our uh, Se uh, Sega Saturn Shiro stream on Friday, which uh, felt to me like a roaring success. I think that uh, it was great. We had a great response. It was great to see so much, so much interest in what in any other circle would be <laughs> uh, like the obscure niche thing to end all obscure niche things. Uh, <laughs> I've never been in a room full of people excited about Bulk Slash. Uh, it feels good. We went to Cleveland's Rib Fest today. It was a beautiful day for. Oh my gosh. The world is healing. We're back to having Rib Fests. That's, that's great. I mostly stayed in today, but I did go to the grocery store, which felt novel. Um, took a jog, which also felt novel, just because it's me. Jogging and me used to not mix. But uh, here we are. Anyway, okay. So we did that stream on Friday, uh, but um, then I was talking, I was like showing some friends the VOD, and some of them were like, well, as far as I can hear, it sounds great. <laughs> Uh, referring to the dub, and I was like, yeah, I guess it was not really the main, like, focus a lot of the time. We were all talking, and there were a lot of people in the chat, so it was a lot of talk. Um, plus, we didn't get to see the full game. There's a couple cutscenes at the end I wanted to show off, although they are still being fine-tuned. Um, so I thought I'd show those off uh, by way of a full playthrough. Uh, because at this point, I think most of the guys working on this game on the team have played through the game a bunch of times. Um, and so we know it pretty well. Shentok, hello. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a way that we know of to subtitle um, any anything in-game, including including the cutscenes. Uh, so it's, it's going to be dub only. There will... We are looking at... Um, offering an option in the patch to not include the dubbed VO, but that would not mean that would not mean subtitles instead. It would just mean that the VO is still in Japanese, and then the text is in English. So you're at least getting some of the important stuff translated. Uh, but we just don't know a way to do it from a technical standpoint. Um, uh, we're we're in touch with Trekkies, um, but it's not. So there's the ending FMVs, and those could theoretically be subbed. Um, I guess that is something we could theoretically look into subbing. That, we, that was actually our original plan because we didn't think we'd be able to dub the ending FMVs because they have uh, unique music that's baked in along with the with the BO track. But we're actually having the music redone. Uh, so it's a whole separate leg of this project. Um, but before that fell in our laps, miraculously, the plan was to subtitle the ending FMVs, but we were, we were like, yeah, that's kind of lame because um, there's this mismatch where the in-game stuff can only be dubbed and the FMV stuff can only be subbed. So um, it felt like a mixed experience. Uh, but we just, yeah, we don't know a way to subtitle anything in-game. 
And in reality, like, even if you could, I feel like um, trying to read subtitles in the middle of a fast-paced action game isn't really that viable from a player standpoint. Um, you know, this, this is uh, the makers of Thunder Force, so <laughs> it's like, imagine, I mean, it's not quite as intense as Thunder Force, but uh, like that style of game still. Oh, so you're talking about just the endings? Um, that so that's an option. Uh, we could still consider that somewhere down the line. I think we're prioritizing the dub just to have a consistent project. Um, but I think once we figured out how to like repackage the videos in the first place, it wouldn't be that much of a step further to provide a subtitle option. I may eat those words, um, but. It's worth looking into. I'm also keen to look into offering um, uh, twin stick support for the game because actually it do the twin stick is essentially just a Saturn controller that's recognized uh, by default, but the layout is not optimized for most games because um, you know the twin stick uh, it basically treats all of its you know bells and whistles as Saturn pad buttons, but the games don't know what's what. So like, you can play this now with a twin stick, it's just kind of crappy. <laughs> so I'm looking into maybe tricking one of the control layouts that are in the game into a, a better layout for the twin stick. I did a poll on Twitter yesterday, or over the weekend, and it looks like type B is overwhelmingly unpopular <laughs> uh, compared to types A and C, both of which are pretty popular. Um, but uh, that's uh, that's not a promise. That's just a thing I'm looking into. I love the twin stick, and I feel like this game would be a great fit for it. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get into it. A couple things I wanted to do though. First, I thought I would show off uh, the sound test, um, and just show how this works. So, um. Oh wait, sorry, it's a voice test. It's a separate category. So you've got all the Japanese voice clips, right? And you unlock these as you go, and as you beat the game with the different navigators. And these are all Leone. We haven't, we haven't translated Leone yet, or we haven't recorded an actor for Leone yet, so it's all in Japanese. It hasn't been implemented. But if you jump... Uh, Let's see. Metical, so Metical Flair is who we're, we're showing off today. She's the princess. That's Lyra. Still Lyra. Lots of Lyra. I guess it'll be after 140 something or 150. Let us be off. Yeah, so here we go. So this is the one character who's currently fully implemented in English. That's Lyra. That's Lyra. Let us be off. All right, now that's medical. Leave everything to me, my dear. Well, shall we then? Me now, I don't want to spoil them all, but that's just a little, like, just to show how this works in its uh, work in progress state. As you can see it in the in the voice sound test. Uh, and then, and so you unlock those uh, as you beat the game with different uh, navigators at your side, and um, you also get these visual bonuses, which are just little nice. Uh, hand-drawn graphics of each of the uh, navigators, which are supposed to show here. I wonder if oh, man, is it bugging out. Awkward. Yeah, it's not supposed to freeze here. <laughs> I'm gonna reset it. Um, that's what I get for going off script. Oh, is it not letting me soft reset even? Alright. BRB guy is going to hit the reset button. Well, that might be a little bit of uh, useful. <laughs> that might mean something. I don't know. We, I, I should look if, uh, Dan Thrax, if you're still watching, uh, something for us to note is that the visual bonus thing is crashing. <laughs> uh... But uh, that is not part of the project. 
I've speed run this game a lot, and I still haven't unlocked a lot of the images. Yeah, because you have to. It, it gets pretty grindy. You have to. There's there are secrets to uh, um leveling up the navigator's like affinity with you. Um, and it's not that hard to level them up so that they, because what happens is you level them up and their dialogue changes as they get closer to you, but then you can continue to level them up to get the better artwork. Uh, and that takes more grinding, but there's a secret thing you can do with each navigator to level them up faster, like they each have a thing they like. Uh, Meticles is, you've, okay, let me try a visual one more time. There we go. I want, okay, that's weird. So that's Leone. We got Lyra. I don't have any of the really good ones. And that's Metical there doing the pathetic face. And I already... Oh, I, at some point I already got her... So it's per play... Huh. Well, there's still something I don't understand there. I don't Because yesterday I got the pathetic one. And apparently I already had the better one. Um, that's Naira. Personal fave. Rupia Rude, she's coming soon. That's Cologne Steiner. That's uh, Kina Dibiase. All of the navigators are named. The naming convention is first name is a currency, last name is a pro wrestler. Uh, okay, so, oh yeah, and real quick, show you the controller layouts. So I use A, which is closest to like a modern shooter, where the, the D pad goes forward back and then strafes and then you rotate with the triggers type b is that except when you're in flying mode uh it swaps strafing and rotating and then type c is uh d-pad goes forward back and rotates and then you strafe with the shoulder buttons so it's like it's totally a preference thing and i think it's it depends on what games you were raised on. Like if you if you loved Siphon Filter and games like that back in the day, that's kind of like Type C. Uh, if you remember Mega Man Legends, kind of offered the same two options. Uh, if you play a lot of modern shooters, you might like Type A. I feel like Type B. It makes sense that it's the least popular because like why switch it? That's just like I don't know. Yeah. So I think that I I'd be I'd be happy repurposing this as a twin stick thing <laughs> it seems like the, de the demand is there and you know who doesn't want another game to play with your twin stick uh but we'll see uh okay so what i wanted to show on this stream is how the dialogue levels up uh as you unlock as you as you build your affinity with the navigators you can see i've got level three with medical um but that's on my one file this other file is lowly so I'm gonna start there and you're gonna see her starting dialogue and then uh, I guess I'll play through it and then play through at least some of it again uh, using the other file yeah you can so you can have multiple saves uh, which uh, might help us with testing I, I realized uh, I should have said something but um yeah, we're at a point, so like, we've just implemented the the VO for the final cutscenes that are in-game, so not the FMVs, but, uh... Oh wait, was there Japanese on that screen? Oh yeah, sure enough, see? <laughs> Sometimes I don't even notice, teehee. Yeah, we should probably translate that. Uh, it says, this is new data. Um we could probably just say new data um anyway let's get into it oh yeah i was saying we we're implementing the the vo for the final in-game cutscenes, uh and it's become tricky to test because my emulator doesn't work very well for me uh so, and so you have to get to the end of the game to even test it and then it's a lot of fine tuning by like nudging a line like two like 0 0.2 seconds or 0 0.8 seconds. So like <laughs> I'm trying to figure out a process where I don't have to play through the game every time we nudge a line 0 0.2 seconds. Uh, okay, so starting from scratch. So I'm going to kick it off with stage three, which is where you find Metical, because the deal is every stage has 
uh, a navigator that you have to find. Uh, well, you don't have to, but you can. Um, this is her stage, and let's go there now. And here you can see we've translated all the briefings. Uh, and in this particular stage, uh, the objective is a little less straightforward than in, in many of this. A lot of the stages are just blow up the things that say target on them. In this one, it's an, it's an escort mission. Uh, so being able to read the briefing may, you know, it's just a little more user friendly. Now, um, like I said, uh, let's see, you turn left here? Is that the deal? I always forget where exactly <laughs> she is. Yeah. So, she's a princess. She's in the castle walls. You go down here. Boom. I'm gonna shut up. How do you do? I am Medical Flair. Might I trouble you to tag along? And doesn't that just feel great to hear it in English? Make sure you say yes, otherwise you strand them. Alright, so, uh, like I said, um, on, like, the Friday stream with the Shiro guys was great, but, um, I feel like it didn't really put a spotlight on the VO that much because we were all so excitedly talking about the project. So I'm gonna try and be a little more sparse and just let uh, Dark Misty, who voices Magical, uh, take the spotlight for a bit. But you know, if you have questions, feel free to chime in and I'll answer them as they come. Stage right, guys. We're nearing a target. To our right. Shields recovered. To the rear. Hey. To the rear. You don't disappoint. Shields recovered. Fire blaster. Shields recovered. Onwards. Come on, make it. Get away. Something's coming. Boss time. Okay, uh, we got a question. Do we have li actors lined up for all the characters yet? We're very close. Um, there's a few bit parts that have like one line uh, for the endings. And um, we are still deliberating over some of the casting um, based on auditions that have already come in uh, but we're very very close and we do have whoa, several of the navigators uh, officially cast um, Rupia Rude who is the rude one uh, she's also uh, a, like a professional thief that you meet along the way uh, and one of the seven navigators. She is fully recorded. Um, we just have yet to inject those audio files into the game. So hopefully within the next couple weeks, uh, she'll be ready for prime time. And we can show her off. And uh, that's my friend Diana, who I'd be 
very happy to do a stream with, and I, I, you know, she has expressed an interest in uh, joining us. Uh, there will probably be another Shiro stream if they'll have us back. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's on the horizon. Hey, nostalgic. Good to see you in here. Oh, okay. How you applied this patch? So it's it's complicated. There's a lot of steps. Um, a lot of where do you even start? So like for the text, which was I guess one of the first things we did in these briefings, um, you uh, like I would transcribe a bit of the Japanese, and then we would we would use this chart to find the hexadecimal code for that for those Japanese characters and we try to find the string of, of hex code in the game data using a hex reader uh, and we try to identify where that string of text began and end began and ended in hex and then we had to um, uh, translate what it meant into English and then figure out the corresponding uh, uh, hex code for the English text and replace it. And at first we were we were doing all this stuff manually, uh, like copying and pasting strings of text uh, or strings of hex code. Um, and the audio kind of a similar process. Um, our engineer uh, Momphis, who's been handling most of the implementation. He uh, he had a friend of his develop a Let bespoke. Uh, like program that automates injecting the audio files, which has made the process much faster. Okay, so this is stage one, and this an interesting thing about this game is that you can choose the stage order in sets of three. So you can ch you can play stages one through three in any order, and then four through six in any order, and then there's a seventh final stage. And whoa. Uh, so this is stage one, so they put the, the miss, which is the navigator, right in front of your face. Uh, I'm not going to get her because uh, we're here to showcase Metical. But that's just a little insight on how the game works. Whoop! Yeah, Danthrax has more info in the chat there. You guys are... Uh curious. Oh yeah, the patch itself is using Knight of Dragons patcher. Um, you know, like, this has really been a multidiscipline community effort um, that, you know, spans the whole globe and uh, is really, it's, it's a meeting of many disciplines and just lots of people that showed up and care a lot. So um, it's, it's just been the most satisfying kind of project you could possibly work on, I think. Um, at least for something that isn't like saving lives. <laughs> and, um, yeah, like it's, uh, like, it's, and it's just, I think the, the more we, we do, the more support we've seen and a lot, you know, things that we didn't think would be possible have become possible. Like I said about the FMBs, we didn't, like, we thought that was like a, just like a can't can't be overcome restriction that um, uh, to dub the English we would have to redo the music from the FMDs and we're like well like I'm a musician but I I'm not gonna be able to like re-record these songs spot on like I have no idea how to do that <laughs> uh, but someone just like I don't even remember how Jiggle showed up but we uh, very friendly person showed up in in our Discord, offering to re-record uh, the four tracks for the endings with his brother. And we were like, uh, "Really? Like you just do it?" <laughs> he was like, "Yeah, that's what we do." I'm like, then by all means. And he sent us a sample of one of the tracks, and sure enough, it was spot on. We I think we all kind of our jaws dropped collectively. <laughs> Um, so that's happening. All right, let me shut up again. Uh, one of my favorite clips, uh, if you try and transform into walker mode when you're over water, like an idiot, 
She's not having it. <laughs> and that was a fun, uh, like, bit of the session to record because we, uh, uh, Misty sort of played around with different insults, you know, and I had written in a few in the script. I was like, because in Japanese it's Tawake, which is like sort of this obscure, like, thing to exclaim, you know, and she's this princess, so I thought maybe it should be a little bit, like, stuffy, you know? And so we mess around with like imbecile and nincompoop uh, and nitwit, and uh, and she did a bunch of them. And then in, in the editing process, I just kind of picked the one that I thought felt the best. Um, <laughs> like there was some that it was like it was funny on paper. I was like, yeah, I get the sense that maybe she ha she hasn't really heard the term nincompoop too many times in her life, or maybe, like it just didn't feel that natural. <laughs> I didn't believe she thought I was an incomplete, you know? <laughs> Something's coming. But I believe she thinks you're a nitwit when you try and transform into walker mode over water. What do I play music by? I play keyboards, I play guitar, and I sing. Um, I used to be like a singer-songwriter back during like the big indie singer-songwriter craze in like the early 2000s. Uh, and, and like, I, I played out in Japan a lot, but I kind of got it out of my system there, I guess. Or rather, it just stopped being fun. I'm kind of hoping that I'll get it back at some point. You could rip it from your disc. As as, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, He's explaining the uh, patching process. Yeah, and once this is this is a, this project is done and we're ready to uh, release it, we will offer instructions on how to actually play this game. There, there are a variety of ways that you can play it. I should mention, um, I'm playing this on a disc on a Saturn. Uh, using pseudo Saturn Kai, which is like a, um, what would you call that? It's like, it's like, a, like hackware, hack, like something to hack your Saturn and give it new capabilities, including the ability to play a burned disc. I do have this game, of course, on disc. Um, <laughs> that haughty princess laugh. We were uh, in the recording booth counting haws. <laughs> I was like, How okay, Misty, like it's ha 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 ha. You got that? <laughs> Supposedly, pop star Lyra Hart is in town, but given the situation, I doubt that concert is going to happen. So every briefing, he gives you a little info on the mission and then a little info on the on the miss who is lurking in that stage for you to find. Any of my music available online? Yeah, I do have a SoundCloud. Um, Let us feel. <laughs> I don't even remember what the... What the uh, it's probably Grega Man on SoundCloud. Some of you guys may remember. I, I used to go by Grega Man when I was uh, at Capcom. That was like my... We're nearing a target. It's a pun, you see, because there was this character named Mega Man once. Also, I don't know if you guys saw this on the Shiro stream, but you have a beam sword for up close Whoa, combat. My, my illustrious wife has joined the fray. Let me clear a space on my couch real quick, guys. What a strange assortment of objects to have to move off the couch. <laughs> it's like a stack of PS2 games, some gorilla tape, a remote control paper airplane. <laughs> All right, now where were we? All right, I like the look of this level. This is probably my favorite level aesthetically. I just love the colors. And I think that 
Uh, it really like hammers home the point that this game tried really hard to achieve uh, like a lot of variety in its stages and also just like a really stylized aesthetic that worked with the Saturn's limited 3D power. Um, I think that it took, I don't know if they, I guess, so Mega Man Legends was, I can't remember if it was 96 or 97, but it sort of plays the same hand, right? Where it's this blocky look, but they made it look intentional and stylized. Uh, but unlike Mega Man Legends, which tried to achieve the feel of like a hand-drawn anime using uh, like uh, lots of textures, like facial expression textures and stuff, this game I guess uses the multiple processors to actually throw up 2D animation while you're playing in a 3D space. Oh. So. All I'm saying is this game is better than Mega Man Legends. <laughs> I'm sure if I change my name from Gregaman to Grulk Slash. Yeah, the oh ho 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 laugh. But I gotta say, like, in... in like working on this project so much, I realized that Manticle is not quite the snob. Like that, she's not quite that archetype that you expect her to be because she's a princess. She's fairly kind. She's on the kind side of the snobby princess archetype. <laughs> kind of gentle snob. Like Niles Crane. <laughs> Any idea if this game got pop track for a commercial in Japan or something? That I don't know. There, there, or there was, there's a soundtrack out there. It might be digital only. Blimp, you're gonna get it. Oh, by the way, you know, I might as well show you guys where all the navi navigators are. Um, down there. I'm wasting my Bezier blaster to look. So remember that Lyra Hart. She's outside the stadium, which makes sense because she's. A pop star who's probably going to perform this. Shields are covered. See, they make Something you think. Remote controlled paper airplane. Yeah, it's a thing. It controls. Yeah, it controls just like bulk slash. <laughs> hey, two across in the chat. Two across, everybody, is the uh, voice Jerry. actor for our protagonist, Chris Dooley. Uh, who we'll see at the end of the game, albeit in a work-in-progress state. We, we, uh, we de deliberated over whether to change the last name, because we... So, the, the protagonist's name in Katakana is Kuresu Dori. Kuresu Dori. Um, and originally I translated that as Kres... Dooley, after deliberating if it was supposed to be Dooley, D O O L E Y, or Dolly, D A W L E Y. You know, because with the navigators, it's so clear that it's a currency and a pro wrestler's last name. So there's like a system. With Crest Dooley, I couldn't figure out what they're going for. Um, neither of them sounded particularly heroic to me. Um, they didn't really even sound like names, even though I know Dooley and Dolly are, I think, Scottish or Irish or one of each. I think they're actually etymo etymologically related. Um, love these explosions. So I didn't really know what to make of it, um, but we just went with Crest Dooley. But then, in working on the final cutscene, which is the sort of emotional climax of the whole piece, you, there's this line where his childhood friend, who has gone to the dark side, is is pleading with him to understand. Kindly select the stage, if you please. And she goes, "Aren't you the Crest Dooley I grew up with?" And it's just, every time, it just made me want to puke, <laughs> you know. And I was like, "It sounds corny at best. It completely in." 
like incomprehensible at worst. Like, what's a crest dually? Is that like, is that like his rank? <laughs> like, what, what is that like being a Cub Scout? What is that? Um, and so finally, I was like, can we just make it Chris? In fact, half the navigators sound like they're saying Chris when they say his name. Uh, so we went for it, and then we changed the line to "Aren't you the Chris I grew up with?" Forget the dually. <laughs> we can keep that in the in the liner notes. Yeah, it's the perfect oh ho ho. Yeah, like uh, like Misty did an awesome job overall, but Let us be off. Onwards. the um the laugh Onwards. and the and the damage reactions, like the grunts and the screams, um, Onwards. are like startlingly spot on. Even in her audition, which which was like Onwards. a real grand slam of an audition, we Spirit, didn't really relax. deliberate Onwards. about medical at all. And I was worried Onwards. because I was like, we got to get someone from UK Onwards. and that's going to make this harder because none of us are in the UK. <laughs> uh, but, you know, she, she had this great audition. But in the audition, part of it was those, those damage reactions and I was just like, oh my god, it feels like the game, like this is how the game was to begin with. Because <laughs> um, we did like a screen test. Uh, Monfus, like, I think it was Monfus, he, he like just slapped in the rough audio cuts from her audition into the game just to see what it would look like. And I was like, oh. Onwards. Onwards. So this mission's a little different again, um, and I think this this really Onwards. showcases the variety that this game offers in a short seven stages. Because um, you like you can transform into Walker mode. It's just kind of not not worth the time. <laughs> um, so it's a flight heavy stage, and actually, as it happens, little known fact, Manticore's secret level up trick is you gotta put you gotta spend more time in flight mode than in walker mode in each stage. Um, and that gives you a, like an upgrade bonus. And there's another character, um, I forget who, who favors the walker mode. Yep. And this info we will also publish somewhere, uh, you know, leading up to the launch. We, I've got a bunch of ideas for like informational blogs just to sort of help promote the game and keep a, keep eyes on it. There's a lot of info out there that never really made it into English or just no one really uh, took the time to figure out. And we've been looking at this game every day for three months now. So. Uh, it, and, you know, just like the translation process has been very interesting, so I've got lots of Onwards. translation notes I'd love to write down. Woohoo! Zigging and zagging works a lot That's in this stage. Oh, I didn't show you guys where uh, the nav is for this stage, but, uh. Well, we can save that for when we stream her. Genova! Where have you been, dude? This is what I've been working on for three months. Yes, it's being redubbed by us. The bo by the way, team, maybe it's time we thought about having a name. It should be funny at first and then less funny each time you hear it. <laughs> like the Beatles. Onwards. Onwards. All right, I like this boss. Onwards. Zenoba, I'm just glad that even though you haven't heard anything I've said in the last three months about working on this translation, you know Bulk Slash. <laughs> it actually makes me even happier. I've been talking about this game for months. You don't disappoint. Onwards. To our right. To our right. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a wild ride, and I feel very fortunate to have been uh, linked up with my fellow teammates, very talented, hardworking guys, uh, and friendly. Onwards. You know, that helps. Onwards. Whoa. 
Onwards. You don't disappoint. Onwards. Oops. Help me done with it. Yeah, lots of widdly, widdly, widdly guitars in this game. And again, uh, this this dev team, it's Cap Production or C A Production. <laughs> Get that laugh way out. Hey, she leveled up. Um, they they come from a Thunder Force background, so you kind of know what flavor you're getting. I may select the stage if you please. Um, they also did that, uh, like, what do they call it? It's like Galaxy Galaxy Space Girls Sapphire or something like that on the uh, PC Engine CD, uh, which is a shmup with fancy graphics. We've got intel that the Ku Army has a weapons plant on this planet. The facility is six floors deep, and you need five ID cards to reach the bottom. Good luck! It's supposed to be unmanned, but we've got a bio signal. Be careful! And that's the uh, that's sort of the shtick with this stage is that the the navigator um, leave everything to me, my dear. Is a thief who snuck in to a restricted area. <laughs> There's like little bits of backstory that they. It's almost like Dark Souls. It's like environmental storytelling. You just have to like piece it together yourself. It's not really anything like Dark Souls. So now that she's leveled up, she's level two. Uh, and that means her dialogue has changed a little. She will now call out what hit you when you get hit. To the which rear. is cool. It's also kind of funny because it's not at all helpful to tell you after the fact. Go ahead. One energy shot. See that? That's new. Watch this. We've collided with the enemy. Moving on up in the world. It always reminds me in... in uh, <laughs> I've talked about this before on the stream. In Robin Hood, Men in Tights. When he goes, watch my back! And he gets punched twice in the back. And Achu goes, your back just got punched twice. That's what she's doing every time you get hit. <laughs> you just got shot by an energy shot. Got it. Yeah, the music in this stage kind of stands out. It's a little different. It's not so widdly widdly. Little widdly widdly. One energy shot. Shield recovered. Napalm blaster. So napalm blaster. That uh, gave us a little. We, we had to go back and forth about that a little bit. I think compliments are in order. You earned your strike. Just. Some new lines there. Um, I had it in my head that in UK people say napalm, not napalm. And Misty said she didn't know the word, and I was like, thank god, that's a great word to not have in your lexicon. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's really a terrible thing. Um, but she asked her family, and they were like, they say napalm. And I was like, alright, well I'm not gonna argue with that. <laughs> So we went with Napalm. And, you know, who knows? It could be a regional thing. It could just be one of those things, like many words, where you know, different people say it different ways. Or I could have just completely made up <laughs> the, the notion that people say Napalm somewhere. They say Napalm in Japanese. Uh, so that might have been what I had in my own. So, uh, what? Noticing enemies that are not present on easy. Uh, that's not a surprise. <clears throat> you know, it's funny, like, while testing for different things in this game, um, I discovered after, like, five playthroughs that I had accidentally put the game on hard, and I've been playing it on hard for weeks. Okay, this is where Rupia is. I'm not going to get her. Uh, but she's hiding in the rafters. 
Miss is, uh, who in the chat remembers what Miss stands for? Because I forget. But Japanese games often like slapping together these unwieldy English acronyms. Uh, like, even Mega Man Legends uh, in Japan is called Rockman Dash. And the Dash was an acronym for uh, Dig Outer's Adventure. Uh, what? I should know this. I've worked on these. That series. Um, Big Outer's Adventure, something, something, and Halcyon Days. Halcyon Days is what the H stands for. Maybe the S stands for something, something. <laughs> Manageable Intelligent Support System. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, like, they stretch a lot. Um, but, you know, that's cool. I think compliments are in order. So, um, this, the game has a chain combo system that's kind of easy to miss if you're not really a score attack kind of person. Uh, for, so basically you, you've got this chart, so when, if, you, if you hold down fire you just shoot continuously, but if you stop holding fire you have that meter charging, uh, and when it's fully charged you launch a bomb. And you can launch it when it's not fully charged, it's a smaller blast. You wait till it's fully charged. Oh, big blast. And what happens is that that can anything caught in that blast will blow up and then the explosion from that thing blowing up will blow up the next thing. So it's a chain home. reaction. So what's good is to launch one of these things in the middle of a bunch of guys and watch the chain rack up and that multiplies your points. Uh, the navigators love it. And <laughs> uh, people on Plow hate this one weird trick. Um, <laughs> um, and that's how you get the really high scores. It's something I'm not that good at, but I try. Because they really do incentivize a scoring hack, because that helps you level up the navigators and you get access to better, or just different dialogue. You know what I mean? She loves the chain combos. And who doesn't? Something's coming. You grew up in the 80s, you're definitely familiar with the word napalm, yeah. I'm like kinda glad that that's fading from memory though. It's like earlier today on another M stream. Who's in the chat? What's up, another M? Actually, yeah, let me return that favor. Let me use this so tag thing real quick. Here, I'm gonna do it, guys. I'm gonna use a chat bot. Or, what do you even call it? A command? What do you do? You do another. You do exclamation point so. And then at. Am I doing this right? Oh my god. Screenshot. Accidentally screenshotted. Did it work? No, it didn't work. Bear with me, guys. I want to learn Twitch after 11 years of using it. Bear with me, guys. I want to learn Twitch. 10 years, sorry. It's not working. 10 years, sorry. It's not working. You need to set up a bot. Oh, no wonder. It's not just a Twitch, like a native Twitch feed. Well, all right. Well, I owe you one. Anyway, we were, I was watching another M. What was the thing that prompted the Micro Machines? Oh yeah, you were talking about, because he was playing uh, Left Alive, which is like a Metal Gear knockoff. It's like budget Metal Gear. And he said, oh, here come the Nano Machines, or something like that. And then he was like, except that we can't use that term, so we gotta use something else. Like, uh, Micro Machines. And I thought, I thought you were joking, and I was like, yeah, that's not taken, is it? And you're like, no, I think that actually is like a, what'd you say, like a, like, like a video game or something? And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah, Micro Machines is taken. <laughs> and then, wow, that was a lucky, lucky hit.
And then someone else in the chat was like, yeah, and weren't there also toys, maybe? And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, these were, like, the biggest toys available for, like, I mean, smallest. <laughs> I may select a stage if you please. <laughs> yeah, like the Micro Machines guy in the commercials, he was like a national sensation because he could talk really fast. Guys, if you don't know the Micro Machines guy, YouTube Micro Machines guy on YouTube and, and be wowed by his fast talking. You have a small echo in the background. Uh, it might be the TV audio. I can't imagine. Oh, wait. Oh, I must have... That's weird. Sorry, how long has that been going on? <laughs> did that that did that fix it? Test, test, test. Okay, good. So my whole micro machine spiel botched. <laughs> our navigation is odd. Laughing at our own jokes here. Leave everything to me, my dear. Onwards. All right. Well, the point is, I'm I'm glad Napalm is fading from the collective consciousness, but Micro Machines, bring it back. So this is the Hoth stage, and I think one of the most impressive. You don't disappoint. I deliberated a bit about how to translate energy waves because it's essentially giant chunky tune beams um, that they call those. I talk about tune beams a lot on this channel. Um, and I thought, should we just call it like energy beam? You know, what's an energy wave? But I was like, it's kind of like the, the Chris Dooley thing all over again. I was like, if they meant Chris, they would have said Chris. You know, like, they know the name Chris. But then I eventually changed my mind about that. With Beam, I was like, if they wanted to call it Energy Beam, they would have called it Energy Beam. You know, they weren't born yesterday, and they know Beams. But, I don't know. Like, so that was my reasoning, and I just translated it literally as Energy Wave. Energy Hop. It's the Hadouken Hop. Um, and, you know, I just feel like that's it, not a, like a thing most people know off the top of their heads. Oh yeah, an energy wave, got it. <laughs> but like, you see it, you hear it, and I, I feel like it doesn't feel dissonant. Unlike Crest Dooley. So I just felt like it's not broke. Don't fix it. I'm also trying to play it on the conservative side with, uh, you know, taking creative license in part because this is not an official project. We have not been summoned by the creators to do this. Uh, and with that, I think that entails a preservation effort. Like at its heart, I think that's what this is. Um, you know, and inevitably when you translate something, you corrupt the original thing. Uh, but I, you know, I didn't want to be guided by just thinking like, no, my idea is better than what the creators thought. You know, <laughs> uh, it's not quite the same thing as okay, what they did is gonna hit different here. Um, like there's a cutscene in one of the endings uh, where one of the navs is getting hit up by all these different boyfriends, and the names are like. Sylvester, Arnold, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And when we were talking about this script, I realized that like some of the guys on our team thought she like the, what was happening. They thought the joke was that she had a bunch of movie star boyfriends. And I'm like, no, I think that they're, they're, those were just like little Easter egg homages to like movie stars they like. But I think the joke is that she has a bunch of foreign boyfriends. Um. And, but then I was like, but that's good feedback because that means, like, it confuses the joke. If you use these, like, really high-profile names, like, 
no one hears Arnold and Sylvester and doesn't immediately go there, right? In, in the English-speaking world, I feel like. And so we were like, okay, maybe we should at least change some of these. And also, like, uh, Arnold and Sylvester don't really sound like foreign boyfriend names, you know? They sound like specific dudes that we all know and love, <laughs> you know? It's like... Uh, so we're like, maybe, like, if she's supposed to be this, like, vaguely international character, maybe we should change the names to reflect that better for an English-speaking audience. Because in, in Japanese stuff like this, uh, English is sort of shorthand for, like, generally foreign. And there's a lot of, like, um, the, like, there's a fairly widespread mentality in Japan of, like, the English-speaking world and the world outside Japan being sort of one and the same, or sort of just used interchangeably. Uh, and you know, to be fair, English is really widely spoken, so it's, it, it's not completely off. But um, you know, it's just—it was one of those things we had to think about a little harder than we translated. That's okay, I'm just gonna not take her aboard. See, this hasn't been translated yet. Or it, ha it hasn't been, uh, it hasn't been, uh, dubbed yet. All of the VO has been, like, we do have translated scripts for all the characters. Alright guys, in the chat, sound off. If we could do a bulk slash 2 or a similar game in the year 2021, who would you want as your co-pilot? And I don't mean one of the characters in this game, I mean like who, who should they add to the roster? Burnt Ends was suggesting the golf guy from the Saturn golf game. What's that guy's name again? To the rear. To our left. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I like that suggestion a lot. Onwards. Onwards. Yeah, this guy is like your he's your your equal. He's the Virgil to your Dante. Onwards. Except that he's red now. Now let's see if I can get up close when I kill him, because then you get treated to a rare shot of your own ship in 3D. Check me out. They actually made a 3D model for the guard duel. You only see it if you're within frame during the kill camp. Oh my god, all these subscriptions. Thank you, Axton, for the uh, the uh, gift subscriptions to all these folks. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't been keeping up with the chat so well. Remember that relationship chart on the website that named a rival for Chris? I wonder if that's who that boss is. Ah, it must be. Yeah, so there was a website back in the day for the game. And using Wayback, the Wayback Machine, uh, Dan was able to find it and uh, mine it for precious intel on the game, including a rare logo with a, an English language subtitle, which I forget what it was. <laughs> okay, here it mentions Reason, who is uh, sort of central to the conflict, the conflict of the game, but you don't, like, because so much of the story is delivered exclusively through the manual. Ah, uh, that's right, the Chronicle of Garduel. Leave everything to me, my dear. 
Okay. Oh, this is lo so this door that says Kina on it um, only opens after you've cleared the game with the other six navigators, and then when you get here a seventh time, the door is open, and if you go inside, you unlock Kina, the rare seventh navigator. It's like a wonder child who's been experimented on. Uh, it's kind of like um. Uh, if you, yeah, like uh, something out of Akira. Or like, I mean, it's like a big trope in uh, Japanese animation, especially of this era. You guys ever watch Nadesco? It's like a space drama, but um, they had they had a similar kid. Um, but she also gives you gnarly powers. You can you have infinite uh, fire blaster or any of the uh, special weapons. I think compliments are in order. And uh, she makes it so your your charge meter your meter charges up super fast. Fire blaster. This level can be tough, because um, it's sort of a labyrinth, and then you've got a boss rush, and it's the last level, and if you die at any point, you have to do the whole thing again, but once you get it down, um, it only takes a couple minutes per run. Now, the final boss, I still don't really have down to a sound strategy, I just kind of wing it, and sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Um, so sometimes I die. <laughs> Are you taking off, M? Well, dude, thanks for hanging out. Good luck with your, uh, your business tonight. Get down here, you! Um, general rule is the fire blaster ends. Good rule of thumb. Yeah, we're approaching the final cutscene with our friend Two Across here, and uh, and then Luzine who played uh, uh, Reason Lavia. This is childhood friend. Oof. Yeah, the dub is implemented in this version, but it's it's not. Totally finished. Uh, we need to tweak the timing of some of the lines because they're a little off, and you'll you'll hear that. But you know, we're not trying to be super secretive about this stuff. In fact, that's something I really like about whoop, working on this as opposed to whoa, working for a game company where you have to, you know, uh. Just be more uptight about stuff like that, and then you gotta worry about leaks and leakers. Got oh, okay. This thing is a heart attack. Um, so you'll get a little sneak peek at like some work in progress stuff that's a little rough around the edges in a moment. Really kindly. There we go. Yeah, you had, to, you had to be very tight lipped at times. Cutscene incoming. Set faces to stun. Oh wait, let's watch some idle animations. I, I haven't showed those.
be a reward when we return home. You're quite good at this, aren't you? Oh, let's go for it. Reason! Do you realize what you're about to do? Yes, of course I do. Chris, you know what we've been through. The persecution that's been wrought upon the people of Blau, including me. If we're ever to change this world, we need a leader with strong ideals and a chosen people to rule at his side. You're wrong, Reason. Creating a better society takes mutual respect and an ongoing drive toward a higher moral standard. If that had worked... We wouldn't be here right now. This is a holy war. It's going to change everything. A holy war? This? Taking millions of people hostage and using fear to get what you want? What you're doing is terrorism, plain and simple. Stop it! Why won't you understand? Why would you stand against me? Aren't you the Chris I grew up with? Sure am. And you're Rizen Lavia. Don't forget that. The same reason, Lavia, who loved sitting in the shade of that old oak tree and reading me poetry. The kind of person who would never do this. Yes. I am Reason Lavia. Acting Commander of the Gardner Army's 1st Special Air Squadron. Lieutenant Reason Lavia. Sworn enemy to your kind! Reason. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to those two actors so reason lavia that's played by losing and um i've dropped the his instagram and website in the chat also an extremely talented artist like an illustrator um so make sure you check out those links actually the instagram is just the at uh but there it is uh and then chris dooley played by <clears throat> Jonathan Boncher, who is in the chat as two across. Uh, and I have some info for him as well. Boom, it's in there. Thank you guys for bearing with me. Uh, and uh, I plugged uh, Dark Misty's uh, YouTube and Instagram on my Twitter, but I will toss those in uh, once this playthrough is up in a few moments, hopefully, if I can beat this boss. Voice actors nailed the nostalgic anime style. That's that's great feedback. Thank you. All right. Now I never got this down, but might as well use up what I got of the fire blaster. Oh God! It's all coming apart. Like a rough coup d'etat. Oh God! In there, baby. Chris. 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 It's over. Stand aside now, Reason. I wanted to do something. I just wanted to do something to ease all the suffering. Oh, the frustration of the people of Blau. At this very moment, three billion lives hang in the balance. Whatever you're after, you won't achieve it by going down in history as an agent of genocide. Don't you think I realize that? I just... I couldn't 
reason! Yeah, there was an attack there that I feel like I rarely see. I think if you go into flight mode, um, maybe it switches up its attacks. And I usually go into flight mode. Is this the right one? That's the right one. So then you have this little outro. Why do you mourn so? You mustn't make such a face in my presence. And that's Bulk Slash. Uh, there's still the endings, but these haven't been uh, translated yet. Or they haven't been dubbed yet. The Spätfest, the <laughs> regional bulk slash fan festival. アロイスガルドナーは実質で自殺を図っているのが発見され、福神のゲハルトは連合軍特殊部隊により射殺された。こうしてアロイスガルドナーの野望はついえたのである。So he used to st stick up for reason when they were kids. And he's just remembering that fondly. It's like, yeah, I did a good thing. Too bad I had to blow her up. Um, we talked about doing using your voice for Kid Chris too, didn't we? And then we never recorded it, did we? <laughs> oh, we still got, okay, the credits are uh, being hacked. We wow, it says sex. <laughs> well, um, that's just a fluke. Um, we believe believe us. We have grand designs for these credits. They're just a uh, work in progress. Um. The grand design is to translate them. <laughs> now, some of these folks also have worked on the Mario Party series for many years. Now, I'm not done. Because I still wanted to show what she sounds like at level 3. And also, I usually stream till 11, so I got an hour and a half <laughs> to fill. Now, did we get the character specific? Yeah, we did. <laughs> that guy's my favorite character in the game. They really just said, draw a cartoon king, <laughs> and that's exactly what they did. 
Hey, getting closer. Wonderful. Yeah, but I already have that. <sighs> yeah, and we already so we've already recorded the VO for that ending. Um, Kindly tell me your name. It's please. very hammy. I'm very happy with it. We just have to put it all together and get the music. What's a peculiar name? <laughs> Um, so real quick, I just want to toss another shout out to Dark Misty, who provided her talents for the voice of Metical Flare and did an outstanding job. She knocked it out of the park with her audition, um, and that you know helped us out early on in establishing a process for everything else. You know, like um, she was sort of the guinea pig for the whole recording process, um, and just was totally professional about it um it was a great experience in every way so um just want to give a little plug she has a an asmr channel on youtube as well as an instagram and uh i will toss those in the chat post haste oh my, God. my emojis turned into words Dark Misty and Metical Flare. Check her out, guys. Show us some support. Okay, now real quick. I don't know if... Uh, I mean, I could do another full playthrough. Because to answer Axton's question, no, I don't know any good jokes that will last an hour and a half. <laughs> Actually, have you heard about the Aristocrats? Um... So what we do, see, is now we select the other backup file. And now we have a fully leveled up version of the character. Should write some lyrics for this song and then have the VA sing it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and now you can actually see the full roster of navigators. So we got Leone Rhodes, and if you've played this before, you may notice that um, a bunch of misspellings have been fixed, and that's all thanks to uh, Dan Thrax. Uh, and I don't, I don't remember if Mumph has helped implement the the data for that. So I don't want to I don't want to rob anyone of credit that's due, but um, I know that Dan Thrax uh, painstakingly handmade a bunch of uh, graphics with fixed spellings, like where it says navigator at the top, that was navigator with an E-R before. Um, and her name was spelled Rayone. Um, Lyra was Rira in some spots, or maybe all spots, I can't remember. We also changed her job from idol to diva because uh, it was just one of those things, it was like, I know idol is the, is the term, but like in isolation, like pop idol is one thing, but just idol sounds like you're talking about like, uh, you know, a golden calf or something. Wait, is that what we're talking about? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> so we look at these. Naira, I, was there something for Naira? I know that there were some... Oh yeah, we changed the planet name to keep it consistent with the German... Because uh, like on the on the solar system map, all the planet names are in German. And here, uh, at least some of them were in English. It might have been all of them. The mysterious Kina. All right, so here we go. It's my true honor to be chosen. Kindly select the stage, if you please. This is all you on this screen and the next screen. Yeah, no website for this project, but we do have a Discord server. Um, is there, I guess, should I throw a invite? 
link in the in the chat for that? I had one on Twitter and then it like expired and then I got scared about how about not knowing how it works. Uh, in oh wait, give me the link. Oh, I see. You got to use the copy button. Okay, guys. If you want to check out the Discord, use this link wisely. Yeah, yeah, all the planet names were in English on that one screen and German elsewhere, so we were just kind of like, WTF? Now onward is onward hope. <laughs> well, the difference. Now, what, like the main difference though with level three is that sh uh, the navigators give more specific directions, <clears throat> so you can ping the navigator anytime with X, Y, or Z on the controller, Ahead and, to the left. and they'll and they'll give you an update on where the target and the closest target is. To the right. So now she can do uh, eight directions. Uh, it used to just be four back, right and left. Now she can do the diagonals. Why the lasers? Why the lasers? We're nearing a target. Onward, ho! You don't disappoint. I think compliments are in order. Ooh. <laughs> Alright, I'm, I'm good. Those bombers, you don't ever, you don't often get a chance to actually get a good look at them, but they're very impressive. I think this game does such a good job of creating a very dynamic, like, screen, you know? There's so much action going on at, at different altitudes and depths, and along different lines of movement. It's just very, uh, pleasing to the eye. It's almost like what you'd expect out of a uh, rail shooter like Sin and Punishment, but they achieved it in a game with free, uh, free movement. The wacky and wild laser beam you got there. Oh yes. That's the Bezier Blaster. It uses a Bezier curve. A term I learned while working on this game. Onward, ho! We're nearing a target. Onward, ho! Follow me, impress! Just two left. Kind of like the Ghostbusters gun. Back into the left. Except it busts the living. Oh. Yeah, they'll call you out in this game. If you do something stupid, or try and walk on water, or walk into an enemy too many times, they pull no punches. Oh. So, every character has a, a light, medium, and heavy reaction to different damage. And the medium seems to be the rarest one, and it's also the funniest one. That's that was it. And then this fire will also activate it. <laughs> 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 
I love it so much. You don't disappoint. Follow me and press. Just one left. Shields recovered. Ahead and to the right. We're nearing a target. Ahead and to the left. You don't disappoint. I think compliments are in order, you nitwit. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the the clips uh, come in they they come together in such a way that the navigators seem like they're really prone to mood swings. <laughs> There's another, yeah, one of her lines is, do you fancy anyone? And I think I heard that once back to back with her calling me a nitwit or something like that. <laughs> I was like, man. I don't know what to do with her. Oh yeah, that's my wife with me. She's Always she's high. laughing off mic. Always high. And he'll be done with it. Back into the left. Head into the left. Oh yeah. That was sort of a suicide mission at the end there. <laughs> if we make a trailer for this, we should use a clip like that. That was cool looking. Finally select the stage if you please. Give me a few seconds. The nubbin came off my earbuds. These earbuds are okay, but like they're prone to losing their nubbins. Okay. Vertical descent while firing into the top of the enemy. Some Dante bullet rain kind of stuff. Yeah! Well, can, you, can you tell I'm a oh DMC fan? <laughs> By the way, I've played Bolt Slash. You don't disappoint. I, think I like her seductive, you don't disappoint, as I blow up a line of cars that just happen to be there. <laughs> Oh, so fun little environmental storytelling here. This is Lyra Hart, correctly spelled. And we know it's Lyra because that's the currency of Italy once upon a time. 90s kids remember the Lyra. <laughs> Oh, so by the way, with these, uh, with the targets in this stage, because some people struggle with this, um, they've got a shield around them, right? You see that? Like a force shield? And there are these metal things that rotate around them. you got to take out the metal things to break down the shield, and then you can attack the target. I think it's one of those things where you can accidentally take out the metal nubbins and not realize that that's what you did and then not understand how the targets work and then you can it can be very confusing if you're a noob no I'm just kidding
1880s kids remember that amazing thank you for hanging out and tuning in you go play some video games please report back you don't really have to but I am curious what you play Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I like the way you think, Axon. I actually played some Thunder Force 4 the other night. It's a lot harder than this. <laughs> but it's cool to notice little like bits of you know the DNA that eventually led to this. Like it's got the speed mod meter and like in this game, it goes up in chunks if you tap the button, or individually if you hold the button. Which uh, I think is easy to miss. A lot of people don't know about that. I never use it, but it's kind of cool that it's there. Now, I gotta admit, there's still something to how the lock-on missiles work that I haven't, like, wrapped my brain around, because, like, sometimes you'll get a really lucky hit, and it will, like, completely decimate their health in a single shot. And then a lot of times it'll feel like you got him dead bang, and then bump kiss. Guys, what stage am I doing? Oh wait, I, <laughs> I can only do stage three. <laughs> but you can help me pick the next one. <laughs> yeah, you're doing stage three. Stage 16. <laughs> next time. Well, shall we then? Look at these cool mech guardian guys we got. They, they're kind of the unsung heroes. They're kind of like me, but they can fly. Like, hey, they can fly in in walker mode. Can they walk in flyer mode? My wife thinks they're cute. Let me see what she sees in me. Shield recovered. <laughs> Fire blaster. Head to the left. Onward, ho. Back into the left. So, if you find this stage giving you frustration, the main thing is just go for the mounted guns everywhere you see them. The turrets. Those are the only real threat, as far as I can tell. Shields 
Because no one likes to fail at an escort mission. Because it feels like it's half not your fault. And that feels bad, man. But once you've got it down, this stage is actually, I think, maybe the shortest one. I don't know. I don't, like you can, you can get really fast at stage one and two. Uh, if you're, and even four, where you got to bring the bombs to the thing. So scratch that. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it's not that bad if you don't fail. Like if you just shoot the turrets, you won't fail. Onward, ho! <gasps> One energy shot. We're nearing a target. Onward, ho! Shield recovered. Shield recovered. To the right. Back and to the right. Ahead and to the right. Cardinal sin of game dev is having to escort someone who moves faster than you walk but slower than you run. Ah, yes. That's interesting. That is a sin, isn't it? Something's coming. It sort of became a meme eventually that escort missions suck. But then, like, they're like they sort of figured it out. Like they stopped doing them for a while, but every once in a while there'd be an escort mission that was like. Or an escort mission type game that was pretty good. Like Eco is great. Um, at least like the escort mission aspect of it doesn't really suffer from a lot of the escort mission sins that gave it such a bad reputation. I feel. Uh, I'm trying to think of others, and I know there are some, but I'm, they're escaping me. Who can name a good escort mission or escort mission game? Escort game. Whoa! Just kidding. Keep that to yourself. Uh, I occasionally slip into Groucho on this channel. I'm sorry. You don't have to live with it. Is that what you call that? Colliding with the enemy? Oop. Yeah, Rubik's cubes. Mind the, Mind the Rubik's cube. You should call me a nitwit. <laughs> Guy with the bow tie, what's up? Thank you for for saying so. I'm glad you're into it. We are certainly uh, excited with how this has been progressing. Kindly select a stage if you <clears throat> And it's just so gratifying to see it in action. Oh wait, what do you guys want to see? What stage? Finally select we get four, stage five, or six. Piece. That's uh, uh, bulk slash in space, hauling bombs. This is uh, the corridor level, and then this is the uh, this is Hoth. Speedrun Silent, Silent Hill 4 and I, Eileen can be a handful, but she can be manipulated to move right along with you. It's fun to play. Oh man, that's that's like pretty high on my list of games I want to play. I picked it up on the Japanese PSN a while back. Played something where they match your pace even if they're leading you. All right, let's go Vice. Uh, yeah, Vice is best. The snowy planet is rich in resources. We've already sent considerable forces here, but they're struggling against the enemy's walkers. Destroy them! And notice that he didn't say this the, the bit about the nav. 
Well, shall we then? Onward, ho! He's probably, I guess that's been the case with each of these briefings, but I just noticed that We're nearing a target. he doesn't Onward, ho! He doesn't give the hints about the navs because I've already unlocked them all. They're already all here with us at the base. Not here, but like in the <laughs> wherever we're getting briefed. Right, they're all here with us in spirit. It's too rare. Onward, ho! Oh god. Ahead and to the left. Ahead and to the right. Onward, ho! Now, if we have any Burning Rangers fans among us, you may recognize that, um, the, like, the navigator system is, is kind of similar, um, to this, like, they have a similar system in that. Uh, you had, like, a, like, a handler that you could ping, and they would tell you where you needed to go, and it was dynamic, real-time directions based on your location. In the 3D space, and I think that was like kind of a cool trick in its time, you don't disappoint. and like a cool way to showcase like yeah, Saturn does 3D, and look at this cool trick it can do in 3D, to make you feel very aware of the fact that you're in 3D, where there's such a thing as forward, back, left, and right. Except a lot of the time in uh, <laughs> Burning Rangers, you ping them and they go. Figure it out yourself, or something like that. <laughs> like the game would get confused, and they had a line for that. When I said if we have any Burning Rangers fans in the chat, my wife thought I was talking about hardcore Rangers fans. <laughs> Like the sports team. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. With the enemy. Yeah, Burning Rangers is cool though, you know? Uh, that would be another high candidate for me to translate had it not already come out in English officially. So, uh, props to Sega for making it happen. It's to our rear. That's a fantastic game. You know, there are a lot of, I think uh, when people talk about I'm translation projects that they would like to see, you tend to get a lot of, you know, like text heavy games like RPGs or SRPGs or, uh, you know, graph like text adventure, or I don't know what you call them, graphic adventures like Police Knots, which had a, a great fan translation. Um, and I have absolutely nothing against that, but uh, the t types of games that I tend to play on Saturn. You know, I've, I've been an action game guy my whole life, and so I tend to gravitate towards stuff like this. Um, and a lot of those, you don't really need the Japanese to get through. Um, although there'll be like moments of confusion where like if, the, if an objective is anything more nuanced than blow up the stuff, you know, you can get confused. Um, but I think even aside from from that, like the um, the utilitarian aspect of the language, uh, you're just getting so much more flavor uh, out of the game when it's speaking your language. Uh, at least that's the goal, I think. Is that it resonates with you on some other level. 
shield recovered. And um you know, so I feel like there's a there's there's a whole category of Saturn games where like they're not that text heavy in the text uh, you know, text and VO, and the text and VO might not be that essential, but they would enhance the game a lot and clear up some confusion, and they would be much smaller projects, so you could potentially do a lot more within a span of time, whereas an RPG might take you multiple years. Um, so I'm kind of keen to keep pursuing stuff that's sort of in the same realm as Bulk Slash, and I have like my own short list, and you know, that may or may not come to pass uh, because uh, it takes it takes a team to do one of these things unless you're like unless you just have a lot of cross disciplinary know-how which I don't um, but uh, you know, I think and I think everyone on our team kind of has their own short list of what they would like to see happen next Whoop. And then there's like another category of Saturn games that like I, there wouldn't really even be much to translate. Like one of my favorites is Elevator Action Returns, but I'm like this. <laughs> there's almost no Japanese in that game. <laughs> Think about it. I'm not sure there is any. Really wombat. Oh, was that was that Japan only? Is that any good? It never looked good to me. Yeah. I've slept on Willy Wombat all these years. You like wombats. I most like I see these mascot platformers and I tend to glaze over. I guess it's not my thing. Except Ape Escape and maybe Spyro. I do like those. All right, guys, four or five corridors. All right, space or corridors. Schwarz or Rot. I speak almost no German, and I'm sorry. The only German I know I learned at Gamescom and it was like currywurst because <laughs> that's what they were selling everywhere. <laughs> Rot it up, alright, you got it. I'm down with rot. Do it in backward order, yeah. We'll show them. Well, shall we then? Ahead and to the left. Fire blaster. I went to Gamescom 2012 in Cologne, Germany. And it was lovely. A lovely area. Um, <laughs> the only thing is my hotel. We stayed in this very, like... Um, not fancy hotel, but like, um, like sort of stylish hotel. It was called the Art Hotel, like Art Hotel. And um, <laughs> it was like very modern design, and the shower was just like slate floor, like stone, like stone slabs on the floor. And it was like flush with the r the rest of the floor of the bathroom, and it flooded. Like the drain was really bad, so the whole room flooded, and I didn't realize how bad it was while I was taking the shower, until I came out and the water had seeped out all over the carpet in my room, up to the bed. It had gotten all over my my backpack, which had like my laptop laptop and all this stuff in there. And, and I was like, crap. And then we spent the day at Gamescom. And 
I came back and the whole room smelled like mildew. I'm like, oh my god. And they couldn't get me a new room for like a few days. So I was just like living in this mildew, mildew suite. <laughs> my boss laughed at me a lot. <laughs> But other than that, Gamescom was great. I had a, a lovely time in, uh, in Cologne. Placing the voiceover audio really difficult. Um, I yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like on paper, I yes. Because, like it was. A, I think compliments are in order. It was. A, it was an involved, multi-step process. I think compliments are in order. That took lots of like troubleshooting and um, just figuring things out on the fly. And we we didn't like none of us really had a very technical background to this kind of stuff. Um, so our engineer actually um, asked a friend of his who could code to create a bespoke uh, like application for us that would help automate the process of replacing audio files in the game. Uh, and then of course we had to actually like audition actors and record the actors and we had to do it all remote. Um, and then, uh, you know, like even just identifying where the data, the sound data is and how to swap it out. Like that, there's many steps. And like, this isn't really a thing that's happened on the Saturn before. What did we just... What? Dan, you had the lowdown on that the other day, right? On on Friday stream, this is the f this is the first Saturn one to do a dub, I think. Something's coming. But there was like a PC Engine game that had been redubbed by fans. It looks like the map animation is matching the dialogue. So yeah, well that's um. So. Sort of a happy, um, what do you call it? Like a happy accident, or just like a happy um, condition of this project is that the lip flap uh, never really matched up with the Japanese that perfectly to begin with. So um, we didn't feel that much pressure to be exact. Uh, but we are limited. Like a major restriction for us, not just with the sound, but with the text as well, is that we we only have as much space as the original files uh, occupy. So every sound bite that we add in has to be the same length or shorter than the original sound bite. Uh, which um, just as like a as a byproduct of that condition, the the sound bites end up being about the same length. But also when I was translating the script, I tried to be as mindful as possible of the syllable count. And it's sort of an inexact science because syllables don't work the same way in Japanese that they do in English. Um, 
And then there's like inflection and things like that that lengthen a word without, you know, independently of the syllable count. Uh, but it gave me a general sense of how long a line would be, and so I think that, you know, we found that the, the whip sinks, the whip flap sinks up pretty well, even though it was, it was like, there was a lot of guesswork, basically. Um, so, so, like, you know, we sort of tried our best to be mindful of that, and it seems like it worked out pretty well, so, like, Feel, <laughs> it almost feels like a, an accident, but like, it's, you know, we did try our best, so it's not really an accident. Yeah, um, I, I think that was our, uh, I think that was Dan's findings the other day, right? That we didn't, that there are no other Saturn dubs, or like fan dubs. Yet. This is played on a Saturn. I'm playing on my Japanese Saturn on a disc. Um, using pseudo Saturn Kai to read burned discs. And uh, yeah, there are a few ways you could play it though. Um, if you have an ODE, which is like. Well, shall we then? Onward, ho. It's a thing Onward, you can ho. install on your Saturn that Onward, allows ho. it to read. Uh, game data off uh, an SD card rather than a disc. And there are different ODEs on the market now. There are some that replace your disc drive, and then there's some that plug into the back of the Saturn. There's like a VCD reader port. For, uh, if you remember VCDs, those were video CDs before DVDs were a thing. Um, and it was this expansion you could get for the Saturn that let you watch video, video CDs on your Saturn, which were bigger in Asia than they were uh, I don't know about Europe, but in the North America, it wasn't really that much of a thing. Um, but uh, anyway, so you can use an ODE and then load up. Uh, there's a patching utility made by Knight of Dragon, who's uh, sort of one of the leading tech gurus in this Saturn modding community, and, and he's been a big help. Uh, for this project as well. Um, he made his own tool that patches uh, Saturn games. So if you have a, a Saturn game, you can rip the data from your Saturn disk. And then um, we'll be releasing a patch, and then you use Knight of Dragon's patching tool to patch the game, and then you throw that on an ODE, or you can burn it to a disk and then use uh, this software called Pseudo Saturn Kai, uh, which you can, uh, it sounds very complicated. We, we will be releasing a how-to when we uh, release the, uh, the patch when it's all done, but that's what I'm doing. So you can, so the Saturn has a cartridge reader in the back, as you may know, and uh, typically you would use that to uh, insert uh, like basically a memory card. It's a cartridge that you save your game data to, uh, like your save data. Uh, and there was also a RAM expansion cartridge you could get for like some of the fancier games, like a Capcom, a lot of Capcom's fighters. Um, but that same cartridge port, um, you can now in the 2020s buy a cartridge that has this uh, like um, hacking software called a pseudo Saturn Kai and that gives your Saturn a few extra abilities um, including stuff like uh, something sort of like Game Genie where you can insert cheat codes uh, but like a, ma a major function is that you can play burn discs because uh, it gets around the uh, like copy protection and uh, so I am playing a patched version of Bulk Slash using my own rip of the actual Bulk Slash game and then patched with Knight of Dragon's patcher tool. Uh, and I burned that to a disc, put the disc in my 
Saturn, and voila, it works. That was a real mouthful. I don't expect anyone to have retained any of that, Something's but coming. that's an overview. And, you know, our goal is to make it as simple as possible for the, you know, the, the typical end user. Um, so, what we expect is it'll just be a matter of you obtaining the game somehow. <laughs> and, of course, you can just buy a copy of the game on, like, eBay. Um, officially, that's the method we recommend, but... There's more than one way to crack a cookie. Right. <laughs> Forget the phrase. Anyway, um, so you would have to have a copy of the game, and then you download the oh patch that we're gonna release, and then you use the patch or tool, which is you a free thing online. I think compliments are in order. On with her. You don't disappoint. And then you put that patch version of the game. Into the left. On something that your Saturn recognizes. Head into the left. short work of this thing. Help me done with it. Something about genies? You got it. Click like two buttons in the patch utility and it patches your game with the patch. Super, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but there's, I mean, the it's becoming. I don't have an ODE, but they're becoming more and more enticing all the time. You know, uh, especially as these things get older. Disc drives don't last forever. You know. I've got about 120 Saturn games sitting on a shelf, um, and I intend to keep it that way. But uh, you know, like once the drive is dead, it's dead. So like, it's good to have a backup way to play these things. That's sort of future proof. Yeah, that was an old Joel on my laugh. You know your laughs. Is it taking an abnormally long time? Uh -oh. As I was saying about those CD drives. <laughs> also, my my backup battery died yesterday. <clears throat> That's what you use. It's a little button battery you use to save um, onto the Saturn itself if you don't have a cartridge. I do have a cartridge. Yeah, this is totally bugged. Yo, check this out, guys. The game crashed. <clears throat> Let the record show, though, that this is the first time this has ever happened in many, many playthroughs of this game over the last three months. <laughs> huh. All right. I guess I'll reset it. Here you can see what the pseudo Saturn Kai uh, interface. This is it, and I haven't really played around with it that much. You know, I just like these cartridges were like forty bucks, and it's it's a three it's a three in one cart. It works as a memory card, a RAM expansion, and a pseudo Saturn Kai having thing. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, total streamer luck. Uh, and I don't even remember what these different... Okay, so what's it say? 
Go to main menu. I know I messed around with this stuff when I first got it. It's just been a long time. Well, anyway. But yeah, uh, this game, not prone to crashing, that was a fluke. I, I guess I'm, <laughs> I don't want to play through the whole thing from the beginning again. Um, what is it, 10, 12? I tell you what, guys, I'll do another stage. It's my true honor to be chosen. Just for good measure, and then Highly select the stage maybe I'll just like mess around in some other Saturn game. Now, I'm in the middle of packing for a big move, so actually most of my Saturn games are in a box, but uh, I think I have a few that I can access. Well, shall we then? Head into the left. Ooh. You don't disappoint. Fire Blaster. You don't disappoint. So, Dan, I, I don't know if you're the only one from the team who's here right now, but while you're here, if, if there's anything you want to plug um, on your end, feel free to toss some links or ads in the chat. Danthrax is uh, one of the core members of the team bringing this all together. Um, so be sure to uh, follow anything he tosses in there. And he's been sort of the lead, like our messaging lead, to um, providing bi-weekly updates on Sega Extreme uh, in the forums, uh, as well as in the uh, in our Discord server. And he made all these uh, text tiles, text text tiles. <laughs> Uh, all the graphics for the text in English, and uh, all the graphics editing for where there were, you know, misspellings in uh, non-text graphics in the game, you know, like where it says navigator select, all that stuff. All made to order, hand drawn, small batch. <laughs> Come on, guys, give me more buzzwords. I tweet lots of, yeah, he, he follow him on Twitter. He's got, he tweets about a lot about the project. Uh, I usually retweet him when he does. Crashed on me when playing the unpatched game on a burn disc using pseudo Saturn Kai. It was after the ending cinematics, but before I could put my name. Ah, so he didn't get credit for for the playthrough. Oh, that sucks. Because, <laughs> like, the game is designed for you to play through it over and over, and one playthrough only takes, like, an hour. Because you have to keep playing through with the different navigators to unlock them and then to level them up. So if you stop mid-playthrough, you don't get... Like, it doesn't save your progress midway. Yeah, and there's that Sega Extreme thread. Where the updates go? Oh, one more. <laughs> I just like that animation. It's a little squeak. We're nearing a target. Hey, guy with the bow tie, spreading the word is a great way to help us out. Uh, that's, uh, you know, something we definitely can't do on our own. Um, and, you know, sort of makes the whole thing worthwhile. You know, ultimately, the whole point of this is to bring the game to more people. So spreading the word is one of the best things anyone can do. So by all means. Something's coming. 
Yeah, I don't think our patch is what's causing the crashes either. Um, otherwise, I feel like it would have happened more than just this time. And you're saying you, it happened to you with the unpatched. So yeah, it could be pseudo Saturn. It could be the burnt disc thing. It could be the quality of the CDR that, I, that I'm using too, you know. Although I think I got good ones. I forget. Let's see if I can do that suicide dive again at the end. Oh god, a little off. Eat it! Oh wow, that's cool looking. <laughs> so that's the current state of Bulk Slash in English. Um, I feel like that's a pretty deep dive. Pun intended. Stage, and uh, there's more where that came from. That's just one of seven navigators, uh, plus Chris Dooley and Reason Lavia we saw at the end there, courtesy of uh, Two Across, who's in the chat hanging out with us, and Luzine, who played Reason Lavia. Check them out. 